I grew up out in the country. I'd come back and forth between the country and the city. It was a divorce type thing. You understand. But I grew up down in the country. Mysticism. Fear. All that sort of thing. Me and my friend, Estevez. Yes, I know how fake that sounds. But his name was Estevez. Mexican Indian. We'd always uh, chill on the reservation. Doing most of nothing, just pretending we were superheroes. We would often admire ourselves for being able to limit our superhero powers. Other kids who would play superheroes with us would always give themselves some I have the power to be invincible. You can't get past my invincible shield. All kinds of things that just didn't make the game fun. Estevez gave himself electrical powers. That's right. And for some strange reason, these electrical powers also made him very, very tough. Gave him a type of invulnerability. Not invincible. He could still be hurt by gun bullets and things like that. I, I created a character named Demon Boy. Demon Boy was basically an escaped prisoner from hell that had a demon inside of him that his noble soul somehow kept contained, but he could use the demonic power. So basically he was... Like the Incredible Hulk, basically. He had superhuman strength, and he was very tough. No electrical powers, though. And we would have fun going on these adventures. On the reservation. We had a whole rule system. Estevez could draw really good. He wasn't the best drawer of our group. That was Marcus. Marcus was the best drawer, but Estevez had a a flair just to make the drawings look cooler. It was this messy style. He was better at portraying scenes. His poses weren't so static. They weren't so contrived. Regardless, the three of us were fast friends. Racism down there was pretty intense. I felt the brunt of it. Estevez, for some reason, didn't feel any of it. He was Indian Mexican. Everyone liked him. Marcus, whitest boy you'd ever know. He was Pentecostal. He had a way about him that just drove people the wrong way. White, black. Yellow, green. No one liked Marcus except us. We liked his straightforward way of doing things. Maybe he's out somewhere right now killing people. There was something wrong with him. That's a story for another time, though. We were out on the plains looking. Looking up at the stars. Wishing that we could get abducted by UFOs. We had concocted stories, entire elaborate mythologies that we could convince others to believe. We invented a story of a woman that lived in a lake. We all came to believe it. Even though, in the back of our minds, we all knew it wasn't to be true. The story had grown a little bit out of control. As a girl went missing, And the perpetrator that took the girl fit the description of the woman that lived in the lake. We were all afraid. Not Marcus, though. Marcus wanted to go to the lake. He wanted to see if what we created was real. 
We went to the lake. I know what you're thinking. Shiny, bright, pristine, Camelot, lady of the lake kind of thing. No, this was a dingy, couldn't see inside of it kind of lake. Our imaginations gave this lake an unfounded fear. We crept towards it, only because Marcus was fearless. We got closer and closer to the lake, wanting to see the woman that we had created in our minds. This phantasm, this evil woman, this evil thing. We went to the lake. We got to the edge of the lake. For the first time in my life, I saw Marcus afraid. There was a raft in the lake, a canoe. And there was a farm just standing there. It was probably just a man. At night. Till this day I still think it was one of the Indians. That were on the reservation. From the distance we could see the long hair. Our minds of course concocted that hair to be white. Estevez said it was black as night. All of our descriptions had varied. The hands went up into the air. I swore she was flying at us. Estevez says she opened her mouth and a light came out. Marcus was already 20 yards in the other direction. We started running. I could swear it was right behind us. Hovering above us. We could feel this evil. Getting closer and closer and closer. I started fumbling inside of my pocket. For the keys. We all run to the car. Funny thing is. None of us can drive. None of us were old enough to drive. But for that split moment. They all believed I had the keys to the car. We got back to the car. And it was almost in unison that we all sort of looked around, looked at each other, and just started laughing. From that day on, we kept going back to the lake, only at night, to scare the living bejesus out of ourselves. We tell each other ghost stories. Now, these weren't good ghost stories. They didn't partly make any sense. Despite our elaborate mythology of our superheroes we had created, our UFO stories that were very, very elaborate, we couldn't really concoct something out of the lake. We simply said it was. And whatever came out of that lake was from beyond. Already harping into Lovecraftian ideals without even knowing who that was. I'll always remember the lake. But I would never want to go back to the lake. Not out of fear. Nothing like that. I don't want to take away its mystique. I don't want to take away the lake's magic. The way it exists in my mind. I saw it one day, quite by accident. The reservation had one of those casinos on it now. I recognized one of the trees. I investigated, not knowing that I had recognized that tree. thought I saw it someplace else. I thought it was in some other place. Some other... Some place in Yosemite, but it wasn't. Once the name came up, I knew exactly where that place was. And now the mystique of the... Now the mystique of the lake was destroyed. Marcus and Estevez were still living in that area. Grown men now. And I was the last to come to the realization that the magic was gone. I so wanted to... 
try to find their numbers. I couldn't. I just knew they were still there. Or at least I hoped they were still there. Or maybe I was the first one to lose the magic. To lose the mystique. Did they still think about it like I did? I guess I'll never know.